So, you have a research paper due and your professor says she wants you to use only scholarly or peer-reviewed sources, not whatever you can find on Google. Many students want to know why this is the case. And the truth is, for everyday kinds of research, Google probably is good enough. Let's say, for example, you wanted to decide whether to stick with a Samsung Galaxy or to give the new iPhone a try. Google would be a great place to find product reports and user ratings to help you make that decision. However, when it comes to academic research, Google is often not your best choice. Let's say that you had a research question like, how large is the impact of fishing practices on the decline of hammerhead sharks? Now, declining shark populations is a big, complex question that marine biologists are currently dealing with. If you did a Google search on this, chances are there might not be very many reliable sources on this particular question. Or you might get buried by thousands and thousands of results, which would take a long time to go through. The fact is that Google does not have access to most sources of good scholarly information. Why, you may ask? The answer lies in the distinction between the deep web and the surface web. To state it simply, the surface web refers to whatever Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc. can access, and it's actually just the tip of the iceberg. In fact, the World Wide Web, what Google can access, is only 2 to 5 percent of the total internet. Web browsers can only access files if they are coded in very specific ways. The deep web, on the other hand, is everything else, and, like an iceberg, most of it is below the surface. In the deep web are closed databases like academic databases, non-HTML coded files and documents, proprietary data sets, and other types of files. But how much bigger is it? Brightplanet.com, which researches the internet, net security, and digital information, had this to say about the deep web. While some estimates put the size of the deep web at 4,000 to 5,000 times larger than the surface web, the changing dynamic of how information is accessed and presented means that the deep web is growing exponentially and at a rate that defies quantification. So, what does that difference look like? Let's say you were in Berlin, Germany to watch the World Cup with one million of your closest friends and bought a pass for the subway and streetcar system. Now, the Berlin system has 349 stops, but what if your pass only allowed you to access 5% of them? That would mean that you could use less than 17 and a half stops in the entire city. You'd have to walk everywhere else. And Berlin is bigger than New York City. The scholarly, peer-reviewed sources your professor wants you to use are found primarily in closed academic databases. Closed meaning restricted access. Tools like Google Scholar can show you some of what's in the deep web, but may not offer you a whole lot of access. One last thing. Academic databases can be really expensive, with subscriptions running thousands and thousands of dollars per year. But you've already paid for access with your tuition and fees. So why not use them?